to the R video tutorial on susceptible exposed infected recovered model part three. So we're going to play around with this model a little bit more before we move on to the next one. And the next one is where we're going to add in deaths into the model. So this uh, could be a disease that is like COVID-19. Not everybody recovers from. So this is going to be the same as our last one. And we're going to use the code from our last one. We're just going to add one other change to the model. And what I'm trying to demonstrate in these part one, part two, part three is there's different flavors of this model and it's pretty easy to add in these other parameters and other dynamics into the model and see how it changes how the population behaves. Now, what we had before is we have our susceptible, exposed, infected, and recovered categories or compartments and these are our transitions between them. Here I'm going to make another parameter. This is going to be the people who are sick. Okay, so we're going to have some sick people actually interacting with the healthy people, the susceptible people. and But there's going to be a lot less of them. Okay, there's going to be a lot less interaction. They're going to be more quarantined. But you can play with these parameters. That's what's fun with this. Once you know how this model works, you can play with these parameters and see how it changes the dynamics. Because, you know, they're always talking about social distancing. Well, alpha is... Are these alpha parameters are exactly that. Social distancing means people aren't coming in contact with each other, so they're never moving out of this susceptible category. Okay, So if you can avoid people moving out of susceptible category, remember, then they stay there. People, if you stay in the susceptible category, you don't ever become sick, and there's no, that means you don't become recovered, which means there's no chance of dying from the disease. Okay, So that's the basic setup. So what are we having in this one? Well, we're going to have people that are sick who are going to interact with the people up here, the people who are healthy. Okay, So they're going to interact with people who are healthy, and they are going to move not to the infected group. Everybody goes through exposed first. Keep that in mind. Everyone goes through exposed first. So we can see how this changes our dynamics. So here we're going to have take out more people. Alpha 2 times S-O-N. That's how many susceptible there are. Times I-O-N. How many infected there are right now. And these people get added to the susceptible group. Or I mean the exposed group here. So we're going to add them in here. So I put add, we copy and paste this. And that's it. This is how this gets changed up here. It's pretty easy. I'm going to actually move this around a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read for those of you who are trying to see this all at once. But this should work. All I need to do is run this. I don't need to change the number of categories or compartments because they're exactly the same. But hopefully you see what the difference is. Is We're now letting sick people interact with people who are healthy. But the rate is much lower than those who are just exposed walking around. Right? It has more zeros on in the denominator here. So let's give this a go and let's see how it changes our picture. Just for reference... This is what our picture looks like now. And we'll see what our picture looks like once we've changed this because there should be more people getting into the exposed group because there's more people interacting with sick people. All right, so it changed our dynamics again. Notice here's the difference in the dynamics. Notice things move to the left, which means people, well, this dynamics are happening quicker. Okay? So people are moving quicker into that exposed category. Uh, okay? And notice more people, as we would expect, who are susceptible become infected, which is what we would expect. But this is another way that you can change the dynamic here. And we can keep changing the dynamics if we want to. We're adding another category in here by taking people out of the exposed and, oh, we did that. We already took people out of the exposed directly to the recovered. So this becomes more and more realistic in the sense of how people actually move. Now, the problem is, is our data doesn't match up to this. And I keep saying this over and over again. And you're like, Ed, when are you going to show me the data? 
Well, we're getting there. We have one more video to go through, and then we can get to start playing with the data and trying to fit the data to these models so that you can see how all of this works. But we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.